Dear colleagues, I am Dr. Keur Parekh, Senior Cardiologist at Sims Hospital, Ahmedabad. Background about this case. Internal carotid artery supplies the anterior part of brain, eye and its appendages, sends branches to the forehead and nose. Blockage of blood supply to the brain due to carotid artery stenosis leads to ischemic stroke, sensory disturbance, ipsilateral blindness, dysphagia, aphasia or speech apraxia and or cognitive impairment. Stroke is a sudden loss of uh, cerebral function, brain function caused by blockage of the blood vessel as I mentioned earlier. Transient ischemic attack is a temporary blockage of blood supply to the brain and usually resolves within 24 hours without apparent loss of function. This patient was a female 61 years old complaining of headache, vertigo, giddiness, dizziness, right eye, discomfort before a month. She had a history of TIA a month ago. Vital statistics were fairly normal with a history of hypertension in past but normal tensive. Stroke strikes at 45 seconds in India to somebody. It is the third or fourth among the all causes of death in India. Stroke is the leading cause of serious long-term disability and it is a high cost burden on patient and family. Diagnostic tools for carotid artery disease includes duplex ultrasound, CT angiography, MR angiography and carotid angiography. Duplex ultrasound is a very non-invasive painless test widely available to determine degree of lesion and as a follow-up tool. It is operator dependent. It can overestimate the lesion. Carotid duplex ultrasound is fairly the most important first test to be done. Here we are doing a carotid duplex ultrasound on the patient. Computed tomographic angiography is our next important test. Very precise, more than even MR angiography or sonography, almost as accurate as a contrast angiography done through invasive procedure. However, it does involve the dye. There may be allergic reaction to contrast. CT angiography, though not widely used, is recommended to be used more frequently. Some of the newer machines with uh, 64 or higher slice capabilities can give excellent results comparable to invasive angiography. Magnetic resonance angiography is a non-invasive test, reasonably safe, uh, does not involve contrast. Sometimes you can do a contrast MR angiography and the amount of contrast is lesser than CT angiography. It does have disadvantages like claustrophobia. You cannot get it done if you have the previous generation pacemakers or metallic implants. In case of calcified lesions, the imaging is not as good and in tight occlusion you can end up with false false positive or falsely inaccurate results at times. Conventional carotid angiography is still one of the most gold standard tests for clear and accurate visualization. Carotid angiography can be done through femoral artery approaches as well as through radial arteries. There is a theoretical risk of stroke during carotid angiography which reportedly to be 1% range. In reality with newer catheters better techniques is less than 0.5%. The cost potential in India for carotid angiography, MR angiography as CT angiography is similar and identical. However, there is a use of dye so patients with renal insufficiency may be subjected to nephrotoxicity. This patient's diagnosis 
was established through carotid Doppler and subsequently MR angiography showing right internal carotid artery critical stenosis. Treatment of carotid artery stenosis involves medical treatment, surgical treatment and carotid artery stenting. Medical treatment is to reduce the risk of future strokes, prevent progression of carotid atherosclerosis. It also involves prevention of thrombus formation, lowers blood pressure, controlling risk factors such as diabetes, smoking, lowering cholesterol, weight reduction, increased exercise, along with serial carotid duplex ultrasound to monitor the disease closely. Ballpark main treatment involves antiplatelet agents, anticoagulants and statins. Advantages of medical treatment are good options for people with short life expectancy, does not require hospitalization and with aggressive medical treatment, lesions in the carotid artery which are less than 50% and sometimes even less than 70% can be managed very comfortably. Disadvantages of continuing stroke episodes in ulcerated lesions is always there. Next modality of treatment, carotid endarterectomy is a long standing proven treatment mainly in low surgical risk patients, very safe, effective. However, it does have a longer process time. There is a rare risk of cranial nerve palsy infection and with newer carotid stent interventional uh, newer therapies there is a belief that endarterectomy is slightly higher risk compared to carotid stenting as far as strokes are concerned. In carotid endarterectomy, sometimes the anatomical challenges, especially in high lesions, prior radical neck dissection, patients with or without radiation therapy, restenosis can also be an issue as well as patients who have contralateral occlusions become very high risk in carotid endarterectomy. Those patients sometimes do better with carotid artery stenting. Condition that creates spinal and neck immobility also can be an anatomical challenge. Contralateral laryngeal nerve paralysis can be an issue. Patient with short obese necks and patients with history of tracheostomy can also be challenges. Carotid artery stenting is one of the most favorable options for patients at, with carotid and uh, carotid artery stenosis. It avoids the risk of cranial nerve damage, does not require general anesthesia. The potential embolization risk with the latest filters is very low and if there is complicated aortic arc, thrombotic lesions, string sign, heavy circumferential calcification, it can be a difficult, uh, challenging case. Carotid artery stents uh, comes in flexible structure as well as variable size to accommodate both internal carotid as well as external carotid arteries. Let us now go to the cath lab. This is a carotid angiography done in our latest G cath lab with rotational capabilities and you do see here a critical right internal carotid artery lesion multi-dimensional view showing the carotid artery narrowing significant lesion with sluggish flow in the artery one more view confirming the anatomy in a different angulation lateral view so before we do carotid angioplasty or intervention we do multiple views to not only determine the lesion severity but also the characteristics as well as anatomical correlation with the spine as well as other bony landmarks. Embolic protection filter was advanced. Filter provides embolic protection. Once the embolic was adequately placed distal to the lesion, balloon dilatation was done and a pre-dilatation balloon was advanced. Lesion was pre-dilated. Carotid stain implantation is proceeded once the balloon dilatation was done and the stent is expanded. Abort vascular exec stent was placed in this case, 9 by 7 mm, 40 mm long.
Once the stent is deployed, the delivery system is withdrawn and uh, a post dilatation is done with a 5 mm by 20 mm balloon. Subsequent angiographic views do show widely patent internal carotid artery at the site of stent placement with an excellent flow. So the question is how bad is a major stroke? In this slide taken from American Heart Journal of 1998 shows that major stroke is considered to be even worse than death and some people even felt it's equivalent to death. So major stroke has to be prevented. Next slide shows carotid stent cell designs and there are multiple designs available and designs keep on progressing. Patient eventually was discharged home after two days on discharge medication which includes aspirin, clopidogrel and statins. Final perspectives on CAS, CAS and best medical therapy is as follows. Outcomes in all are evolving to the positive most unequivocally and dramatically for carotid artery stenting. Various uh, mesh covered stents and other stents are improving more the uh, final outcomes. Judicious expert selective decision in these therapies in a complementary fashion will, re will lead to improved patient outcome. And if done effectively, should make both procedures safer. Fewer strokes, fewer MI, less disability, less card cerebrovascular and cardiovascular mortality. To conclude, these are my take-home thoughts. Patient characteristics has to be kept in mind. Image the disease and define the plaque morphology very carefully based on whether if it's a thrombus, if it's a soft block, calcified block, diffuse and long block, tandem and high block, whether intracranial disease is there, vascular anatomy, whether it's amendable or not, you have to make a decision. No one modality is better than other, but you have to evaluate, accept, uh, evaluate and decide. Summarizing, engage all appropriate healthcare providers in the stroke management process. Seek input and feedback to find opportunities. Small savings of time can produce major benefits. So when your patients have stroke, make sure you rush them to the interventional center in the fastest possible time, preferably within less within three to four hours, even earlier. We'll all have to develop regional networks and contacts to treat these patients. And uh, at hospitals like ours, we do even intra-arterial treatments to provide the most optimal care. Again, take-home message is TI represents a potential vascular neurological emergency. Carotid artery stenting is the treatment option for patients at high risk of CEA. It avoids the risk of cranial nerve damage, does not require general anesthesia. And newer techniques using balloon techniques followed by stenting with full maximal distal protection as well as in some cases proximal uh, protection using various filter device or pro proximal protection like MoMA device is an approach with reasonably low morbidity. To motivate drug adherence, patients should be reminded that their antihypertensive, antiplatelet and lipid lowering drugs are indeed stroke prevention pills and should not be forgotten or missed.